Today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I would make a size chart in Canva. And I just wanna preface out this video by saying that I am pregnant and I've been having severe heartburn lately, like the past week. So if I seem kind of grumpy or down, I swear I'm not, I'm, I'm loving making this video. It's just, I'm in so much pain. Okay, enough rambling. So the size that I typically go with is 2,700 by 2,025 pixels. I find that looks best on Etsy. And if you're going to be creating these to sell them as a digital download on Etsy, I would modify the size just a tad bit for your cover photo because Etsy has changed their cover photos to being squares rather than rectangles like they used to like a month ago. I start out by naming my document in Canva. You will notice I put Gildan size chart, even though I'm gonna be doing a Bella Canva size chart, so just ignore that. Then I click on text on that left side and click add a text box. I'm going to be adding my heading. So my heading is going to be size chart or Gildan size chart or Bella Canva size chart, whatever you would like it to say. I personally just like it to say size chart and when I have sold these items on Etsy, the best ones that sell just a size chart on the top, and then they'll have maybe the shirt or the sweatshirt name of it below it. Now it's the fun part. Now we get to go pick a font. So what we're going to do is we're going to go click the arrow by now, and then, or it's going to say whatever font you have your heading already at, and then that little arrow, and then you can go and kind of play around with different fonts. Now when you're picking a font, you want one that is going to be very easy to read. So what I mean by that is if your customers look at the item, they or the digital download, then they can read size chart right away. So as you can see, some of the fonts I'm clicking on aren't the easiest to read at maybe like three seconds glance. And if they cannot read it at a three seconds glance, I typically say it's not a good font to use. Like this one right here, I think it's just too difficult how it's sideways and cursive and kind of just looks scrappy. So I decided not against that one. I have been loving the font named Lubeg. I think that's how it's pronounced. I am making a pregnancy book right now and throughout the whole pregnancy book so far, it's been that font just because I like it that much. When I am selling these on Etsy, I will say that the more simpler the font I use, the better it sells. So that is something just to keep in mind and maybe don't use as fancy of fonts. Go more simple because it does sell better and it's just easier for people to see. Now we're gonna try to center this. So you see if I hold on to the size chart text box and I slowly move over, then a line comes across the screen. This is telling me that the text box is centered on the document. Now we're gonna go in and find a photo to add to the size chart. I'm going to be using a Bella Canvas 3001 T mock-up that I took a while back. And then the step after that is that we're gonna actually delete the background. And how you delete the background is you go and click edit photo, and then you go over to BG remover, that stands for background remover, and you're just gonna wait for it to load. And then once it loads, it will erase all of the background and leave only the necessary items. Now you will see that the hanger looks a little weird, but that is because I had the hanger tilted backwards. So the camera could not actually see the little curve in the hanger. So we're just gonna go with it and kind of make it a little bit shorter, look like I cropped it. And I think it still looks great. See that I'm just going to reposition this photo. And how I do that is I click on the photo and then there'll be little bubbles or circles that come around each corner of it. You're gonna click one of them and then scroll in to make it smaller and or scroll out to make it bigger. Instead of always clicking text and add text box, once I already have a text box on my screen, I just go ahead and click that and click copy and paste. This way it already has the font and the size in case I want to keep it. What I am doing here is I'm just adding a little sentence that says this shirt is in the color mauve. This way, if anyone is looking at the size chart and they really like the color of the shirt, they can just read that instead of messaging you, which is a win-win because it's less work for you you. Now we're going to go in, click that again, copy and paste, like I just said, and we are going to add the shirt name. Now this is something that some people like and some people don't like. So when I am selling these digital downloads, I will get some messages that say, please don't add the shirt name. I don't want my customers knowing what I'm selling or my competitors or whatever their excuse is. Generally, I put it on because they do sell better if the shirt name is on the size chart. So it is completely up to you. Now we're gonna actually add the dimensions of each one of them, but first we have to add a text box that says size, width, and length. So how I do this is I go ahead and I click size and then I do the space bar three times. I go one, 
two, three, and then I will add width and go one, two, three again and add length. Now it is completely optional if you wanna add sleeve. So a lot of size charts have a sleeve on there. I typically don't add them, but again, completely up to you. Now I'm going to go on to Etsy to find the dimensions of the Bella Canvas 3001 size chart. The way I do this is I just type it in and look at other digital downloads that are selling. So I will go ahead and kind of look through all of them, see which ones have around the same numbers because you just don't want one that has incorrect numbers and then yours are incorrect too then. So you just want to make sure that you're kind of glancing over them and then i'm going to go back onto my digital download and just add the sizes this is where you're going to decide if you want extra small to 5xl or if you just want small to 3xl or small to large or whatever you want generally i like to make my sizes a broader range and this is just because i don't want to aim my size chart at just petite people or just plus size people i want it to be everybody I don't have the space in this size chart, but if I had more space, I would sometimes go in and play with the line spacing. So you're gonna go on top and click on the spacing tab, and then you can either go left to make the spaces a little bit smaller or right to make it a little bit bigger. A lot of times when I'm making size charts, if I do have a space, I will make it a little bit bigger just so the sizings and the dimensions are a little bit further apart so it's easier to tell which dimensions go to small, medium, etc. Now we're going to go back on to the size chart that we found on Etsy and we're going to kind of memorize the different sizes as they go down. So you'll see that 16.5 goes to 18 and then after that it just increases by two every single time. So when we go back into our size chart we know that those are the dimensions that we need to go down. We don't have to keep going back and forth. I don't have a dual mon monitor so this way it just makes it a lot easier to quickly write them as I'm going down. And then one thing I will do at the very end is I will make sure that the 5XL has the right dimension. So you can see the 5XL is 32 inches. And if we go back onto Etsy, we can see that the 5XL is indeed 32 inches. Now we're gonna go in and do the exact same thing that we just did for the width for the length. We're gonna look at it and see that it goes down by, or it adds up by one every single time. So 27 goes to 28, etc. And we're gonna go back onto Canva and copy and paste the text box, bring it over, and we are just going to input those numbers as they go down. The last thing that I go ahead and do is I add arrows onto the shirt so you can kind of give the customers a general area of where the width is and where the length is. So I'll just go right into the shapes area and find the most simple arrow I can find and then I will go and adjust the line weight which is just going to make it bigger or smaller depending on how you adjust it. Sometimes the arrows can be a little bit tricky because when you are trying to shorten them they want to rotate and then they don't rotate back to zero degrees which is just the center the way that it was and so then I honestly just ultimately have to delete it and then just reapply an arrow and then restart to where I was because it's just a little fussy sometimes. But once I get it to how I want, what I do is I just go and I copy and paste the arrow so I don't have to really deal with the length of the arrow, I just have to rotate it manually. And then I am going to readjust the line weight to make it a little bit smaller because I thought that it was a little bit big. And then after that, I go ahead and copy and paste another text box to add width just so they know which line is width and which line is length. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this exact same thing with length. To rotate the text box, you're gonna click the left circle on the bottom underneath that text box and you're gonna hold and then rotate in a circular motion. The last thing that I am going to do is I am going to change the background of the size chart. Now, one thing I will always do is I will type in color codes and then before that, I will type in the color that I'm looking for. So in this particular incident, I am looking for an off-white. This just gives me a lot more options to choose from rather than going on the color wheel and trying to find the perfect color. This is just a lot easier than doing that. You're gonna look for the little hashtag and then the number, the letters and the number combination that come behind it. So in that particular example, you'll see that it was hashtag 
F5, F5, 4. And then that's all I have to do. But I want to show you that one more time because I feel like I went kind of fast on that. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the background. Then you're going to click on the color on the left side and the top and then you're going to go into the plus size and then that little rectangle that's where you're going to put in the number hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't comment down below all right guys that is all i have for this video if this video gets 200 likes i will give it you all this size chart for free downloadable on canva so make sure to like this video and i hope to see you in my next video have a nice day guys Bye bye